Alrighty. I think I have everything, uh, sort of set up here. Ooh! Let's go ahead and uh, move from that thingy to this thingy, and hopefully my brain works enough. This all makes sense. And yes, I am wearing the streaming cap again today. It is my silly hat. Do not take it away from me. Or not, nobody is watching. And that I am speaking off into the void. Uh, so, today, today, we are playing through a game purchased for me by uh, my good friend Magnus. Now, I did not buy this myself. And this is a totally unbiased uh, review of, of the game. And uh, No, there there's not the uh, maple syrup mafia looking to uh, throw me to the bears and moose. I'm not sure which one I'm frightened of more, but yeah. Also, Jesus Christ, the game is taking forever to load. Do not have much of anything else running right now. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> Congratulations. The game's gonna take a year to start. Or maybe it's just stuck. Always a good possibility. I know when I was trying to play it earlier, um, Steam was just fucking freaking out. Hey, Underell. Pumping the laser. As uh, Terra prods me. Okay, this is getting a little excessive. So let's uh just try that one again. Hopefully it works. Hopefully. So maybe it's just like not jiving with the fact that um the stream is running right now. Who knows? I have not tried this yet. Steam's working just fine. At least it looks like it is. Oh hey, sale for Paradox. If you guys like Paradox Studios, buy their stuffs. They're out in the money hall. There that. Everybody knows my Steam details. Um, right, something is uh, definitely funky. Funky, funky. Let's try that again. Yeah, I was playing Conan earlier and it was working just fine, but then again, like when I tried to launch Conan after playing Underrail before, it didn't work. I had to quit Steam and restart it. I don't know what the fuck is going on. <sighs> oh, 
Hopefully you guys are having a better day than me today. Well, I'm not having a bad day, I'm just having a sleepless one. I tried to get a good night's sleep to, uh, uh, last night. Oh my goodness. So the stream might not actually be working today. What the hell? I also did just update my graphics drivers, so... Maybe under rail doesn't work with the latest graphic drivers. The only thing that I can think of in my head. I've got my art stuff open. That's not taking up all that much memory. Check our task manager right here. Chrome's gobbling up, uh... This video is sponsored by Mel... A lot of memory, as usual. Sorry about that. Uh, Time-lapse Vertigo game. It's using a whole 38 megabytes of memory. Can't be like. Oh, good lord. Hmm. I mean, it's running. There's plenty of memory. Plenty of memory left behind for uh, processing. There's six whole gigs it can play with. Come on, chop chop. Let's go. Move it, move it. Yeah, guys, I, I, not sure. I'm sorry, Ronnie. I'm sorry. I bought this game, or rather, Magnus bought this game, and it was working earlier. <laughs> It's not working now. Just infinite load. Work. There it goes. What the hell? Okay, let's uh let's go to our settings. We're gonna do um change our audio so that you can hear things a little bit because it seems to have reset my audio. All right. How is the uh, audio on you guys in? Can you hear everything all right? Set it to full screen. There we go. All right, so let's see how this goes. We're gonna start a new game here. Uh, I played through the tutorial, and that is it. I've done nothing else in this game. We're going to play it on normal difficulty. Provides a lot of challenge to average hardcore gamer with less room for error in combat. This is the, gay, the way that the game is meant to be played. Most games, I actually do put it on normal. Weirdly enough, I I don't do the, the hardcore, like, oh, you play the game on its hardest, hardest difficulty. Done that for a few games. Yeah, the experience isn't the same. Playing it on normal usually is more per perfect. Now, here's the choice that we have. We can do an oddity XP system, which I th think is actually pretty interesting. You gain experience by collecting oddities scattered across under rail and by completing quests. Higher end oddities are found in progressively more dangerous and hard to reach ac or hard to access areas. No experience is granted for skill usage or killing. Though some oddities are only dropped by creatures. Yeah, that's true, Ronnie. Sometimes it's fun when you're playing with friends and the salt is part of the experience. Yeah, definitely. Then we have the classic XP system, which... Yeah. Just regular old RPG progression. 
I think for for this for this run we're gonna use classic because oddity oddity would definitely be something like after I've already done the game and I've got a little bit more uh, footing underneath me so we're gonna accept there let's see here we can be male or we can be female let's uh, flip through our stuff here uh, I did the tutorial I made my guy that huh. interesting I like the suit he's very very dapper all right, so um, you have your standard uh, skill array here, and uh, in this game, skills sort of determine things that I wouldn't normally ex expect. So, for instance, um, strength is used to be able to use sniper, assault rifles, and sledgehammers and spears. Stuff that you would traditionally assume would be part of like an agility thing or something like that. Hey, Magnus, you made it back. Yeah, I think I'm still going to do the, uh... uh the, I'm going to break all your bones with my mind, uh, Psy thing, because apparently, there, while there is no magic system in here, there is the pseudo-magic system of psionic abilities. And psionic abilities are kind of weird. Ah, uh, metal tier. You can't be Noodle Arm Sam to and 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 have that. So our first choice is going to be dump all them points in that will. Heavily flex, uh, affects all side disciplines as well as side point regeneration. The men who stare at goats, Gator Edition. Yes. We're going to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna drain a couple of points from. But we'll keep it on decks. That's fine. I'm already gonna be working with. Less for my um, objects from far away. I can make him blind. That, that'd be kind of interesting. Uh, ten, seven, fives, and four. So I'm going to do like a D and D array for this. Eight, two sevens, and then we'll sort it out from there. So if I toss here, the show all button. Oh, on the feet, show all. Okay. Okay, so, um... Corporal Protect... Corporeal... All telekinetic damage increased by 5% for each point and strength above 5. Huh. Okay. All healing increased by 25%. Ooh, fast metabolism. That actually sounds really good. What does that need? Constitution 6. Well, what do you know? We, uh, we just happen to have that. I'm gonna take that fast metabolism. Because I know I'm gonna get the shit beat out of me. Then I kinda want a sneak... Uh, what's it, a sneak ability? Like, paranoia is nice, but... Telekinetic martial artist, yeah. Stoicism, survival instincts. You're happy, disassemble, interloper. Uh, 
Agility 7. Yeah, we don't have... We don't have a 7 available right now. We've got a 6. 6th shell. Each shotgun will grant 10% bonus damage to shotgun attacks when stacked up to 5. This damage increases 100% after the 6th shell. Okay. Spear throw, force user. Telekinesis is strong with you. Damage increases your telekinetic punch. Blah, 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 blah. I need psychokinesis at 25. And the psi ability of telekinetic punch or psi field. Hmm. Kneecapping. Deals an additional 125% original damage over three turns and removes all movement points for the same duration. Yeah, I don't imagine you'd be going anywhere after that. Okay. Bowyer. Craft have the... Uh, Concussive shots. What is this? You can deal mechanical damage with your crossbow. Your bolts have 40% 40 40 chance to daze living targets, reducing their action points by 15. Oh, that's not bad. Uh, okay. After invoking heat base psi ability, you gain thermodynamic uh, dynamicity. It's a really hard way to say that. Okay, which reduces the action point cost of your cold base psi abilities. Are 50 okay, so this is this is a lot. This is a lot, a lot. Hypothermia, your cold base metathermic psi abilities also reduce your target's constitution by one. This effect stacks up to five times. Last 24 turns. Jesus Christ. Spinning. Ecostatic electricity. Reposte. Uncanny dodge. Okay, we're just, we're just going to come back over here and... Like, I've got that one remaining point. I'm I'm going to sink that into agility, because, you know, that that makes sense to me. Either that or, uh... Yeah. Do that. We're taking strength and perception as dump stats. Premeditation is beast mode one, two. Okay. We have sure step, versatility, strafe, recklessness, uh, quick pockets, paranoia. Ninja Looter, Opportunist, I might just go with Expertise again, just for beginning perks, I mean that sounds like it would be good stuff, so let's go ahead and start by doing uh, 10 points in each of these. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. I will have those. Um, I'm going to say at least five in each of these skills for our social stuff, just so we can get along with people. We're going to take... 
We're going to be making a lot of hypos, I imagine. We're going to do 10 in biology and 5 chemistry, just to take advantage of the bonus point that we have there. Primarily craft various items, such as explosives and... Yeah. Then it would probably do us good to put 5 points in there. And we're going to do... Here with crossbows, we're gonna put in we'll put ten for crossbows and five for guns. We still have thirty points to play with. Fuck. Fly circlets are made with electronics. Okay. We still have twenty five to play with. So I can spec on one of my um, on one of my things here. So use metathermics as our base thing. That's thought control, pyrokinesis. Oh, that's just the other things. Or I could focus on thought control. Thought control. I'm a uh, I'm gonna take the special uh, the speciality in that. That seems like it might be fun. So I'm gonna also go ahead and say. Five lock picking and. Or five hacking and five five lock picking. And then I will probably chuck the last ten in between dodge and evasion. Uh, I don't feel like dodge and evasion would be the, the good thing. They're not even getting bonuses. I think I'd just rather stick that in, uh... Stick that in stealth. Seems like a good idea, right? Yeah, it seems good, seems good! Got our stuff here, and, uh... Well, I mean, our constitution's okay. I gave myself extra constitution because of the whole Psy powers saps your HP thing. Yeah. Also, whenever I was trying in the tutorial, whenever I was going around using the sneaky sneak, it wasn't working out so great. We must enter a character's name. All right, what are we gonna name him? Um, Reggie Brain Sploge Sploder. Reggie Blaine Brain Splosion. There we go. The high tier con ability? Which one? Yeah, but like I ran face first into the asshole because of the whole line of sight thing on here. But you guys are gonna see this in a second. Thick skull. What the fuck? Right. Filter um Thick skull. Thick. Whenever you should be stunned, you're dazed instead, which reduces your action points by 15, and movement points by 30, but still allows you to act. Oh, Lord Jesus. Alright. Yeah. Lost turns are scary in turn-based games, especially when you're outnumbered. 
Adrian Tanner. All right, last topic, of course. Earthquake repairs. What's the situation at the South Tunnel? Gorski responds. Gotta dig deeper into the plant and plant the explosives, or we risk more damage to the tunnel. Vera Hale chimes in. Almost everybody is working in shifts up there. Shouldn't be too long now. I can't do a female voice. You're gonna have to deal with this for here on and the rest of the game. You brought this on yourself. Adrian responds. He nods. Gorski, how's that security looking? Gorski responds. Got one man at the cave exit, then that's enough as far as I'm concerned. Automated security is strong there, and as long as we know the crossroad at the cove and the cove are clear, no one can sneak up on us. Also, got one man at the underpassages. He's been ordered not to open the gate, no matter what. Last thing we need right now are those bloody lurkers sneaking up on us. Everyone else is up the platform, securing workers in the tunnels. Adrian. Good. Good. <clears throat> good. Good. If no one else has anything else to add, uh, that, that will conclude this council meeting. And he's turning into Alex Jones somehow. Oh, uh, God. Workers are fucking nightmares. Oh, goody. Actually, just one more thing. Just in case that you weren't informed already... I admitted a new citizen to the station. That Reggie Blaine... <laughs> that Reggie Bl Brain Explosion fellow? Yeah, I think he could be a good addition to the station. He and Vinsel are still up at the range, but uh, they should be done any moment now, I believe. You put too much trust in your test, Tanner. All I care about is how he handles live action, not how many points he got. Well, we'll find out soon enough. Best put him to work immediately. We need all hands on deck right now. Indeed. That's all, Vera Gorski. Oh my god. Why do people trust me with these things? <laughs> It's too powerful. An unexpected yawn interrupts Vinsel. He instinctively raises his left hand to cover his mouth, forgetting that he's wearing a respirator. A tiny smile creeps up on your face due to this very fact. Yet, you understand that after so many hours of testing and these, kind, these kinds of lapses tend to sneak up on people. He soon continues. Uh, excuse me. All in all, Reggie Bling brain explosion. As far as I'm concerned, we're done here. I've got a few other things uh, that I need to do unless you'd like to have another go at the testing range. You have no reason to stay here any longer. Well, I'm feeling pretty tired and it's hardly a secret that you are too. Besides, I can't wait to check out my new room. Also, this does not look like my character portrait at all. I have no doubt that you'll like it. Uh, I'll have. Uh, what's it? I have yet to see any new uh, newcomers complain. He laughs. Nothing more to say other uh, say than congratulations again, Reggie Brain Explosion. Welcome to the Southgate st Southgate Station. Go ahead and get some rest. I don't know why I cannot talk today, but uh, see you around, Vinsel. Okay. That was the tutorial right there. I just bypassed it so that you guys don't have to see that. Hmm. Alright, let's see how much I remember from earlier. Light switch. Let's, uh... Yay! We can see now. What's on the shelves? Nothing. Of course. And I can't zoom in, can I? No. Check the uh, the desk. Oh, hello. I'll take that compass. Two hundred credits and private quarters key cards. 
There we go. Personal computer. Security scope. Reggie brain explosion. Personal computer access level whole full. Personal messages. Read message. Key card from Wayne. New. Hi, I fixed your door so your key card should work fine now. If you haven't found it yet, the card should be in the desk. See you around. New message. Welcome from Tanner. New. Congratulations! You passed all the tests that we presented to you in the past weeks, and you have now obtained full citizenship in Southgate Station. On behalf of the entire community, I welcome you to the fold. Visit me in my office in the Commons as soon as you've rested, so we can discuss your duties in the coming days. I think Tanner was the chick, right? Or am I like misremembering shit? That way. There we go. I really wish I could zoom in on the screen. Alright, nothing in that. What else we got? Broken pixel. The colorful mosaic doesn't seem to represent anything in particular. A hanged rat. What could it mean? Okay, we've got a couple of lockers over here. Maybe we've got some gear here. Ooh, hello. Mechanical repair kits. Patching kit, some flares, and rat hound leather armor. This armor is made of rat hound leather. No matter how hard you try to wash it out, the faint stench of this filthy creature remains. 17% mechanical resistance and 7% cold resistance. If you equip it, your persuasion is decreased by 3. Damn! That's, uh... That's not something I expected right there. Some bandages and some health hypos. Seems pretty, uh, makes sense. Alright, anything else in here that I might have missed? Got the footlocker, all that stuff, the shelves. Alright. Ooh, hello. I'm gonna be a hobo and uh, rifle through the trash. I'm used to like right clicking to move everywhere. It's so weird. Oh no, that's red. That's these are all red. There's one thing I know that red is uh, means means bad. Ah, oh, this is a bathroom. Maybe there's something in the bathroom. Turn on the lights. It's wasty electricity, damn it. Anything? No? Okay. No, it might might be wise to just like turn on the light switch. Yeah, I can't bathe anyways. Okay. What about the F button? Self mode, pickpocket, and lock. Yeah. It's the, uh, the, the, it's its version of a radial menu. It's like the quick select. You can lock the door on your room. Well, I mean, like, what? what's the fucking point? I don't have any Psy abilities. See? Lock, pickpocket, and stealth mode. Those are the only things I have there. Burst and attack. Okay. Yeah, all those doors I can't go through. So, to the elevator it is. Commons and Cantina. Shit, where were we supposed to go? I 
think it was administration and library. Let's, uh, let's check that out. Because I don't have any weapons, so I imagine that we're supposed to be given weapons. Hello, commoner. It's nice and quiet here. Sorry, no time to chat. Gotta get some work done. Staring at these boxes in the corner. If you're having trouble finding info, best speak with Vera. Uh, where, Where is Vera? I don't see Vera. Hello. Are you coming for some reading? Yeah. Looking for something specific. Uh, Vera? You know, person and stuff. A couple commoners. Some consoles are out again. I think Ezra's working on that. Sorry, I ain't got time to chat. I gotta get work done. Staring longingly into this guy's eyes. Oh my god. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> I will, however, uh, help my. Uh, I was gonna help myself. Yeah, fuck it, I'll help myself. Help myself to nothing. I knew it was gonna be empty. Woman doesn't exist. Where the fuck? The ghost. Oh, that's not immersive. That is not immersive. I can't beat the hell out of the vending machine. Oh, there's Vera Hale. See, I remembered it was the chick. Good lord, there's so much stuff. <laughs> I'm having to resist so hard. I'm getting those Morrowind twinges. Like, I'm gonna steal it. It's not nailed down. I'm gonna take it. You meet Vera previous, uh, you met Vera previously during your testing period. She is one of the counselors here at Southgate Station. Good to see you found your way to my office, Reggie Brain Explosion. How do you like your new home so far? Yeah, it's pretty good. I could see myself staying here for a long time. That's good to hear. So, how can I help you? I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do these voices the whole the whole way through. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> What can you tell me about Core City? It's a city to the north that spans both levels of Underrail. It serves as a gateway both to Upper Underrail and to the United Stations territories to the north. Somehow her voice is coming out like Ash from uh, from Ego Raptor stuff. The city used to be controlled by the BioCorp security forces. But then they went rogue and split into smaller factions. This was followed by a couple of years of street wars between these factions. I believe one called themselves the Bloods and the other the Crips. The fighting eventually ceased and light of outside threats and serious infrastructural problems and nowadays the three surviving factions rule the city together through their appointed mayors. Um, right, can you, uh, I, I mean, I, I asked, so, I guess you did tell me there. Uh, can you tell me a bit about the United Stations? Uh, certainly. United Stations, also called Union by some, is a confederacy of states in the North and Central Underrail. It is an attempt to unify the entirety of Underrail so that we can, we all work together towards a better future for the human race. Basically the shit that you're supposed to do when apocalypse happens. Okay. Similar to our our station, the Union is ruled by Council of Five. Most stations of the Union have some degree of autonomy as well. The Union stations are constantly expanding. 
and why no station while no stations here in the south are yet to become part of it something like that will surely happen in the near future okay well um what, what uh, i'd like to know more about the protectorate would you like to know more? Like. The Underrail Protectorate is a military organization that protects the United Stations, I keep wanting to say nations, uh, from external and internal threats. It predates the Union itself and has also played a crucial role in its creation. The Protectorate is under the command of General Melek, who is widely considered to be the most powerful man in Underrail. He holds a special place in the United Nations Council of Five, United, United Stations Council of Five, and some also believe him to be the de facto ruler of it. And I'm sure if I go and try and fight him or look at the metadata of the game for that particular character, he is really powerful comparatively. All right, so... Are there any plans for the SGS to join the United Stations at some point? Our citizens and our counselors are divided on the matter. We currently have good trading relations with the Union, and I personally think it would be a good idea to be among the first to join, the, uh, join it here in the South. We're arguably the most powerful faction in these parts, so we could position ourselves advantageously in their organization and also retain a high degree of inter independence. This would also ensure that we avoid any potential military conflict in the future should the Protectorate decide to move against the less civilized communities of the neighborhood. But as I said, not everyone agrees with me here. You must understand that many of our current citizens come from, well, organizations that have, for various reasons, been Protectorate's targets in the past. So they're not very keen on being buddies with their old enemies. But let me ask you, what is your opinion on the matter? Would you like to see your station become a member of the United Stations? Um, I, I, let's see here. Hell no! Sounds to me like a silly facade for that mellet guy ruling under rail through a gun. 200% ANCAP. Big brain territory. totally well um like are you talking to like the classic wasteland or are you talking about the new one that uh that they released that may not be completely untrue but keep in mind that every great civilization was created with a gun or a sword i expect that in the future in a more peaceful and safer time the focus will shift from the protectorate towards civil rule of the union We'll see. I hope you change your mind soon and give the United Stations a chance. <clears throat> right, um... See you later, I guess. Uh, w was I supposed to, like, get work from you or something, or...? Uh, uh well, I can't go in through those doors, and... Everybody's watching every move I make. Every breath I take. I've got like 200 credits to my name, and I don't know if that's a good amount of money or not. So let's uh, check my journal. I'm gonna guess J? Or. Wait, there's a flashy thingy. No, that's, that's just help. All, all that. Oddities. Notes. Notes. Here we go. Talk to Counselor Tanner in his office in the Commons, level 3. Okay. Alright. I'm getting more when flashbacks. I actually have to use the journal for once. Instead of the, uh, the Skyrim method. <laughs> Is that a cat?
Yeah, that's a random fucking cat. Okay. I'm gonna go loot the trash. This bathroom? Yeah, it's bathroom. Nothing? Nothing. Always check the bathroom, man. You never know. You never know. Alright. Fuck off, cat. I don't trust you. I don't like cats. Hello! Ain't shit in here. Okay. Ah, oh, there's Tanner. The other dude from the beginning. Man behind the desk is Hadrian Tanner, the counselor who admitted you into Southgate Station. Even during your first encounter with him, he struck you as an unusual looking individual. Setting aside his impressive stature, one finds it difficult not to notice how his thick, bushy hair and beard envelop most of his head. And, uh, in addition to his opaque glasses covering his eyes, which you've never noticed him without, means that you can't, you can see very little of his face and its expression. He is a somewhat dirty scavenger outfit, which he wore earlier as well, and it clashes with the clean, finely furnished office, suggesting that Tanner probably does most of his work in the field. As soon as he finishes typing, he raises his head and reaches out to shake your hand. His big hand, tucked into uh, dark brown gloves, makes yours seem like that of a child in comparison, and uh, you especially feel his large fingers be twice as thick as yours. His deep fi voice fills you with a distant and cal uh, feels distant and calming when he addresses you. Congratulations once again, Reggie Blaine Explosion. I can't pronounce your name after an uh, unfortunate uh, soup incident, but uh, welcome to our small community. You scored very well on our tests. No small feat, that. I'm sure you'll turn out to be a valuable and respectable citizen. More importantly, I hope you'll find peace and kinship here, uh, which are so hard to come by in the chaos surrounding us. Um... Yeah, I'll, I'll try my best not to disappoint you. That's good to hear. Hope the earthquake didn't disturb you much and you were able to, uh, to rest a bit from all the testing. For you have much work to do today. Events have transpired that require your attention. Are you ready for some field work? <clears throat> ready and able, so uh, what's up? There are multiple events I need you to take part in, but uh, one thing at a time. First, you can have your weapon back. Lucas at the armory should have it. And while you're there, you might want to drop by a shooting range since you be doing some field work today. It might not be a bad idea to warm up in case things get ugly. Speak to Gorski if he's there. He'll help you set up <sighs> some practice sessions. However, this is entirely up to you. Um... Uh, it could come in handy. Uh, wh what about the field work? Down in the tunnels below our station, just to the north of Crossroad Caves, lies a series of abandoned outposts. These outposts were built by another station long ago with the purpose of scouting the defense. Time, they fell into decay. I want you to retake them so that they might once again serve the same purpose. However, in order to do so, you will need to activate the main power generator that's located in Side one of them. Um, <clears throat> fuck. Harold from engineering sector. Ah, uh, fuck it. Harold from the engineering sector thinks he knows how to get the generator operational, so he should be your first stop after we're done here. As far as I'm aware, there are a total of five outposts plus one with the generator. I don't know if it's possible to activate all of them, but try to activate at least three. You may also want to talk to Jonas at the crossroads watch post. It's down the tunnels just outside the station. You'll be passing 
through there anyways. Here's one of your most ex he's one of our most experienced scavengers, and he probably has seen more of South Underrail than any of us here. He'll surely have some useful advice for you. Uh, I'm actually curious. Why are we retaking the outposts? Important strategic positions uh, should certain factions attempt to encroach further in our zone of control. Besides, cleaning them out will also push back some of the unwanted wildlife further away from SGS, so it's beneficial in that regard. What wildlife? I understand that a few uh, packs of rat hounds move into the area. You're best talking to Jonas about that. He'll have more details. He knows the area inside out. Alright, I'll be off then. Oh, and one more thing before you go. Pasquale, our station's chief physician, wanted to see you. You should probably pop down to his office in the medical sector when you have the time. Uh, got it. See you later. Alright, you grungy hippie bastard. There's chests. There's boxes. And nobody is looking. Oh, I'm gonna jack the fuck out of this. Oh yeah, baby. Looking, looking round, finally paid off. There's nothing in here. Fuck. Oh well. Did it just a question of lights? Is that what it was? No. Oh well. Hello? I'm, I'm, I, I kind of want a s sneaky beaky. Shh. Oh, that was kind of worthless. Oh well. Well, the kitchen cabinet surely has stuff in it, but... Oh no, that fat fuck is gonna see me. God dog it. Oh. Oh. I forgot that you could do that. Stuffed bat. Mmm. Mushroom salad. Canned mushrooms. Can of mixed dried mushrooms. Food inside has been exposed to ionizing radiation in order to eliminate microorganisms and insects. Consume, reduce all bio damage taken by 15%. Huh, interesting. Ooh, canned mushrooms, canned fish. Are we sure we're not playing 2D uh, Metro? Like, seriously, man. <laughs> oh, A grabs all. Alright. That'll, uh, that'll make things easier. Alright, so, need to go check out medical. And I gained XP, fuck yeah. Alright. Medical and psionics. Give me my brain powers! Doc! Doc! I have a mighty need! Make people fucking explode! Ah, hello, Ragey Brain Explosion. First of all, let me congratulate you on your admittance to our little station. I'm sure you'll love it here. It's good that you came. I actually wanted to talk to you about, about the uh, results of some of the tests we ran earlier. Uh, is there something wrong with me? No, no, quite contrary. 
Sorry if I scared you. You see, test results show you have a certain amount of psionic potential. I'm not derailed. <laughs> mean I can, like, read people's minds? No, how much potential? Not exactly sure until I run some more DNA tests, but it's there. Okay, let me just tell you a little bit about psionic potential first. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, plus and minus will increase the movement speed. I'm fine with the movement speed. It's about the same as what Fallout's was. It's a relatively rare and inheritable complex genetic trait that triggers the development of certain otherwise latent components of the brain. It allows a person to perform subtle psychonic invocations, such as influencing the minds of others, as well as some not so subtle ones, such as causing radial temperature radical te temperature changes in telekinetic uh, telekinetic manipulations. Um, how did the genetic trait come to be? No one is really sure. Research indicates that it is a relatively recent genetic mutation, but it sure could not have been a random one. So many things are just too complex and convenient to, uh, to be anything but artificially designed. There are problems with this theory, though former BioCorp's head of genetic research, Hal Roche, outlines these problems best in his thesis. I won't bore you with the details, but the essence of the problem is that with the technology that we currently have at our disposal, creating, testing, and integrating such complex genetic structures is simply not possible without colossal amounts of trial and error work. So much trial and error work that Roche argued that even if you combined all the genetic processes in the world in his, t uh, in his time and let them work on the subject for the entire time of their existence, they would still be extremely unlikely to produce results. Furthermore, Roche points out that there are areas of the brain where the psionic activity takes place were never even properly charted, let alone genetically decoded. So, you see, it's a bit of a mystery. We know more about how to make it work than actually how it works. Hmm. Interesting. Indeed. Anyways, there's something else you wanted to know. Uh, how do I realize my potential? Give me the brain, melted powers! You must first disable your psionic inhibitor. It's a neural structure in your brain that prevents you from accessing your psionic projection centers. You assume it was designed to prevent the infants from unwittingly harming themselves or those around them. There are ways to do this by extended meditation, but this can take years. We have a more efficient method nowadays. He reaches into his pocket and takes out a large red pill. This pill will take care of the inhibitor right away, but there's uh, one side effect I am obliged to mention. The majority of users experience immediate and significant weakening of their immune system. When I say majority, I mean everyone, to put it bluntly. It will severely affect your health. Therefore, the choice is yours. So, let's see here. Is is the process painful or dangerous? No, no, not at all. Well, maybe a bit dangerous, but it's not painful at all. Much. Make it a bit woozy. That's it. Do I, do I need to prepare somehow? No, just go ahead and swallow it. Just stare at the pill in his hand for a long time and just like grab it. <laughs> you force the large pill down and for a while nothing happens. Uh, I don't think it's working. <laughs> oh shit! Reggie Brain Explosion, are you okay? Can you hear me? <laughs> no, it's a disco rave! Ah, good, you're awake. How are you feeling? <laughs> What happened? Uh, disabling the inhibitor seems to have caused a psionic surge, but you're alright now. Possibly some brain damage. While you were out, I took the liberty of performing some more DNA testing to determine the actual levels of your psionic potential. And it's great! I suggest you start your training immediately. Also, take these. He hands you a pair of syringes filled with blue liquid. These Psy Boosters will help increase your psionic recovery rate. Basically, they'll allow you to use more Psy abilities within a certain period of time than you normally could. Fairly cheap, work fast, and have no major side effects, and are equally useful to beginners and experienced psionics alike. There isn't a reason to have a couple when you're going out. I'm going to roll to persuade. Only two 
boosters, Mr. Doctor Man? Uh, what do you mean by only two? You are quite sufficient to get you started. Ah, you prick. <laughs> I've got a lot of dangerous work ahead of me, Doc, and considering I've uh, yet to become an experienced psionic, I'd rather not find myself short of boosters when I need them the most. Just use them wisely and you should be alright, or you could simply purchase more. They're cheap, but not cheap enough for me to be giving them away like that. Fucker. Gib more! Alright, so, uh... How do I get more of the abilities? We'll just have to talk to those who are already adept at it and see if they will teach you. We have two very good specialists on our station. Quentin is well versed in metathermics, which is the area of psionic development that deals with uh, instigating rapid temperature changes and chemical reactions. He used, one of, uh, used to be one of biocut. <laughs> Shit. Uh, I'm getting brain damage now. He used to be one of Biocorp's researchers working on new applications of psionics. You'll find him at the agronomy, Ag agronomy, agronomy level. Bison is our martial arts expert. He can teach you psychokinetics and how to effectively use it in unarmed combat if that is something that you're interested in. He is usually in the gymnasium across the hall. I think he's helping with clearing tunnels right now, so you'll likely find him at the station platform. So, thought control discipline is considered by many to be nefarious, and it is also the hardest to get really good at. Not sure where, who can teach you. I heard rumors that Ezra, chief of engineering, is actually a powerful mind controller, but I don't know if that's true. Most people here, including me, know nothing about Ezra, so it might just be some of them are making this stuff up. And then there's temporal manipulation, which purportedly allows one to control time itself. Never seen it in action. It's a discipline few practice, however. I've heard that a man goes by the name of, uh, what was it? Ethan, uh, Lanford. Yes, Ethan Lanford. I heard that he's a practitioner of the discipline. He's not from around here, but he does visit SGS from time to time. In fact, I just saw him in the bar moments ago. In any case, I'm sure Arlene knows more about him. Ask her if you're interested. Anyway, I have to get back to work now. If you have any more questions, you come and see me anytime. <laughs> You've acquired brain damage. <laughs> don't trust Ezra with your brain, but don't fucking try to attack him. Okay. Falling rock smashed his shoulder during an earthquake and hit just to the side would have killed him instantly. Ugh. But of course. Oh. I'm a stealthy boy, this one. Okay. Why did you close that, you dum dum? Ooh, a dum dum. Yeah, there's stuff in them. There's stuff in them, we know that. Oh, punch it. Take my noodle arms! Yeah! I got the biggest guns in the show, baby. I'm curious of the weird guy I saw over here in the, uh, thing right here. Surgeon. Oh, okay. Sneaky beaky. Nothing. Nothing! 
Okay. So, I guess we'll go back to the level that we were on. Let's see. Oh yeah, we also have to start uh, stop at the uh, shooting range and grab our gear. Our guns. Yeah, I'm not gonna try and steal shit in here. I'm, uh, I at least have that much self-preservation instinct. Short man rises from behind his desk with a grenade case in his hands. The heavy case meets the top of the desk with a thud, raising your eyebrows, which in turn makes the man's face turn into a smile. He removes his gloves and shakes your hand with a strong, perhaps too strong, grip before addressing you. Don't worry, Reggie Brain Splosion. I ain't gonna blow us up. Nope. Anyway, Benzel told me that uh, you'll be staying with us for a while. I guess so. Thank you, so. Reggie is canonically brain damaged at this point. Oh, a quick save. Okay. Well, friend, make yourself at home. Uh, can I have my gun back, please? Of course, it was the, uh, yeah, 5 mil pistol and some ammo, if I recall correctly, right? This one produces a pistol in such bad condition that people would pay to get rid of it. Actually, no, I had a crossbow. Huh. So this is just letting me choose, but... Okay, so let's let's at least try for the forty-four. Like, give me give me that give me that sweet lady propane of of, of firearms. No, seriously, is this your pistol? Like, I could sell the fucking thing back, I would imagine, but eh. all right, fuck you, man. Just give me the fucking thing. Oh, this got to be Newton's gun, huh? Eh, my bad. Here you go. Change you the weapon. Alright, dickhead. Um, I want to barter. I have stolen goods. I must fence. Okay. Compass, that. Food. Oh! Oh. Oh. Well, shit. Now well, I have no armor, so... Might be a... Ooh, that's kind of a nice thing. Armor penalty? Uh, I saw the, the, the cost. Fuck that noise. Why is everything so expensive? I'm supposed to be like saving you people or something, right? Cave hopper boots, 13k? God damn! Individual parts. A smig. Oh. This is worse than Kenshi! Three firearms, six firearm parts, one rat, two crossbow parts, two boots, grenade. Yeah, I ain't trading with you, Jack.
Oh, imposing picture figure, battle scarred veteran tower before you. You met Gorski before. He was one of the counselors interviewed you when you first arrived. You passed all of Tanner's little tests and exercises. That could not have been easy, but I don't think you're. So, but don't think you're some kind of hotshot now. You, uh, you've yet to deserve that privilege you're being given. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> what are you here? Uh, guess I'm here for target practice? Go ahead then. Okay, I'm off to do the target practice, I guess. Try not to hurt yourself. Okay. A controlled zone. See how bad the uh distance is. Fifty eight percent. God dog. Well, at least it hits. Wait, does this not cost ammo for me to do this? Okay. I don't know what's up. Ain't nothing else down here. Except for that uh, vault right there, which I'm sure has... Um... Oh no, that's the little training room where I was at in the beginning. Okay. Alright. Agronomy and pens. Let's go here. There was something that we were supposed to get here, right? Something. Something. Let's see. Ooh. Ooh. Somebody's gooey. Knock, knock, open up the door. Hello, Quentin. Come up to a rangy man with long hair who's cutting open a, the head of a large monstrous creature, formerly an untamable beast. Is now stiff, but volunteer, uh, a, a, now but a stiff volunteer to post-mortem dissection. Science. Soon enough, the man makes his final incision after where he pushes his hand through to extract a single long sharp spine greenish sticky fluid dripples out of the opening all over the floor as the man wipes the spine clean before laying it aside and that is the moment he finally notices you careful you don't want to get in contact with its toxin he returns to cutting through the creature as he talks to you name's quentin don't bother introducing yourself i know who you are your reggie brain explosion and you got admitted to the station. Just got admitted. I shake your hand, but you see why that wouldn't be a good idea. Um, what kind of creature is that? It's a burrower. It's a nasty creature that digs around, lays eggs all over the place. They're more numerous deeper underground. You can still find a few roaming, roaming the lower under rail and surrounding caves. You meet one, be careful, it'll uh, spit thick, hard spines at you that are coated with poison. What are you doing exactly? Collecting poison glands. We can use those to produce other chemicals and coat crossbow bolts. What's the other room right there? Grown mushrooms, different kinds. Of course, most notably, the mine shrooms. They're one of the most potent and certainly one of the safest psionic catalysts. And largely popular psi boosters are made from mine shrooms, in case you didn't know. Um, right, can you teach me psionics? Oh, well, that's correct. Are you interested in learning, perhaps? Teach me the brain-sploding powers! Hmm, I heard you scored highly on Tanner's test, so yes, I'll teach you what I can. If you perform one little task for me. Son of a bitch, I knew there was a catch. Which task is that? See, I was conducting some experience, uh, uh, experiments on rat hounds a while back. It was quite close to a breakthrough as well until a uh, little accident happened and Brett forced me to get rid of the creatures. Hmm. Now I can't finish the experiments. Not here anyways. 
new experiments where you could, could what were you doing with rat hounds I was working on developing a substance that would transform the muscle and other types of tissue into a potent fertilizer for mine shrooms uh, what happened well never really had an appropriate place to keep the rat hounds uh, I drilled breathing holes into a couple of those large crates and kept them there turns out I underestimated them after a while they chewed their way out of their predicament alright well what do you need me to do I prepared a final version of the concoction and filled a set of crossbow bolts with it. I need you to go out there and to get in the caves and shoot rat hound with it. Once it's dead, collect a tissue sample uh, from around the wound. If you don't have a crossbow, you can borrow mine. It's in that locker over there in the corner. It's not like it's going to get much use these days anyways. If I do this, you'll teach me for free? I'll teach you one psi ability for free. You'll have to pay for the rest. Make that two free Psy abilities and you got yourself a deal there, partner. Not a chance. It's what you prick. All right. Oh, God. So I don't think it was really worth me putting those points in that. I should have just, like, hard spec Just, like, done two things good and just fuck everything else. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take his other damn crossbow. Fuck it. He said I could have it. I'm gonna take them bolts. Alright, let's see here. Why it fucking erp! Uh, also, I might want to equip some of the uh, health hypos. Oh, wait, those aren't combat utility? Huh, okay, that's interesting. I put that. Ah, oh, good, I can put those there. Alright. Is there anything else in here I'm supposed to get? No, uh, just looks like a place. Oh no. There we go. Lake poppies. Ah, no! Don't steal the lake poppy. Oh, that was close. Oh, hello person. I didn't even realize you were there. Logan, where is Susie? Welcome to Hydroponics. There are all kinds of plants here. Don't touch anything. No soil here and a mineral rich solution runs past plant roots. God dog it. <laughs> what about this place? Show me the money. Big Brett. You must be Reg Brain Explosion. They call me Big Brett. Past all the tests, I see it couldn't have been easy. They're just getting harder and harder in recent years. Pretty hard, but I like challenge. Oh, you're gonna love it here. So what brings you to the pins? Um, barter? Question mark? Throwing net can be used to immobilize people in combat. Tranquilizing bolts when fired from a crossbow. This limited amount of damage, but you can put a human or animal to sleep if it penetrates their armor. The smaller the target, the longer it sleeps. Okay. So I'm going to guess here that he is... Well, that's not a bad blueprint to have. He buys animals that you, uh... 
Currently looking for four plants or fungi. Alright, well, I mean, that was a thing. What about up here? What well, we got up here? I mean, that door was locked, but... <gasps> he 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 he! Ain't no one here. Hello, barrel. Alright, so I'm a stealthy boy. Lock picking 55. Okay. That is, uh, that is a touch outside of my, um, zone of expertise. Actually, let's, uh, let's look at that little journal thing real quick. We're gonna F5 it. Oh, man. Did I learn any hacks yet? No, I haven't. Ooh. Welcome back, man. Become Mama Murphy yet? Shoot the rat hound. Wait, damn it! They didn't tell me where the other guys were. Fuck. Okay. I guess we're gonna... Oh, engineering. Ethan's in the canteen, that's right. Uh, sorry, my, my brain is like half here right now. Oh, fuck you, security camera. I need more caffeine. Yeah, I, I feel you. Ezra. Hello, Ezra. Oh, shit. Oh, this guy looks trustworthy. He turns around to face you. You immediately notice there's something off with this man. His face is pale and hairless. He's missing one of his eyes. Instead, wires protrude from his eye socket. Traveling over the side of his face and disappearing down the back of his neck, the other eye is almost colorless pupil so contracted that you question whether it, he can even see at all. He speaks with calm and even voice. Hello, Reggie Brain Explosion. I am Ezra. I act as the head network administrator and chief of the entire engineering sector. Um... Are you blind, Ezra? Ezra raises his hand slowly and extends it towards you. He holds two of his fingers in front of your face for a moment, each pointing at you in your eyes for retracting the hand. I hear you're a powerful mind controller, is that true? Ezra remains silent and just stares at you. It's true, I'd like to learn from you. He just keeps staring at you. Stare back at him. First, nothing happens and the two of you just stand there staring at each other. Your thoughts slowly start to drift away and you, what you're doing and you're almost don't even notice that you're losing control of your own body. The world the world around you blurs until uh, blurs away until the only thing you can clearly see is Ezra's one eye staring at you. It seems as if he's not looking at your face but through it into your mind. Uh, I will use will. Feel Ezra's surprise as you fight back for a moment. You're able to break his grip on you. In 
Continue focusing and attempt to take control of him. Attempt to reach out for him with your mind, but the element of surprise is gone. Okay. I'm knocked out. Fuck. I think I did a bad. Find yourself on a small aisle in the middle of the lake with no recollection of how you got here. Shit. Oh, fuck you, you brain bug. Eat crossbow. Ugh, not again. You gained 57 XP. Um, okay. Is there something else I was supposed to do? Engineering Cyber Labs. That's what I was gonna try and do. Reggie Brain Explosion. What did you do to me? Only what you wanted. Consider that the first lesson, free of charge. Want to learn more psi abilities? I can teach you how to short circuit the brains of others. Or instill fear uh, in them or break their minds. Prior's thought control 30. Not ready for that yet, you're not ready for that. Shit! Like I said, I should have, like, just... What do you sell? Plasma cores. Headbands. Okay. Um, really, really expensive headbands. Shit. No, I just gained 57 XP. Oh, never mind. No, I, I learned Neural Overload. Hey, hey! Look at me! Got that big brain power! Fourteen to nineteen electric- God damn, that's not bad. 14 to 19 versus 11 to 23. Yeah. It's a little tighter on the numbers. Okay. Actually. There might be some shit back here I can... Nah, fuck. Nerds in the way. Nerds. Locked hacking 30. Yeah, I don't got that. Hello! What's up, Harold? Nice to meet you, Harold. I'm Reggie Blaine Explosion. Henry tells me you know a way to restore the power to the outpost in the north. He nods. Right, I remember taking a look at the power generator there a while back. I couldn't do anything with it back then because I didn't have this. He rummages through a box and that are on the table for you, produ uh, producing something that looks like an energy core. Here, it's a flux controller. If you insert it into the slot at the front of the power generator, it should get it running again. After that, you ought to be able to reactivate all the outposts. I'm afraid you'll have to do it manually, though. You see, each of them has switches that cut off the powers in case uh, power in case of hazards. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. 
I'm not allowed into any of the stuff here. This game is very quickly learning some things. I mean, titty drawings. Am I out of there? Oh, I'm out of their view. I'm, I'm willing to bet you. Sneaky peeky. Oh, yeah. No. We'll take that. Nothing else here. Shit. Well, he sees me now. I think. We kind of got this men-only thing going on in this corner over here. We aren't supposed to watch the arena in here, so keep it quiet, okay? Hey, man, want to watch the arena? Okay. Want to watch the arena? Let me watch the arena. Watch it. Watch it. No? Okay, fine. Screw you. Screw you, game! Okay. So this is your favorite little floor of uh, the station. But this being, like, built out of a train station, this really doesn't resemble a train station. Like, at all. Oh, man. Also, it's hot as balls right now. We've had nothing but cold fronts lately, and then all of a sudden today, it's just like... <sighs> warmed back up. Texas weather, I swear to fuck. Also, I'm gonna put the tiny nets on my bar. Uh, Harold, you got any stuff to trade? Okay, he's got caltrops, uh, serrated bolts. Hmm. Wow, that is ridiculously priced. The fuck are you supposed to make money in this game? Yeah, he's not buying anything I want to sell. Alright, fine, fuck off. You don't get my money. You don't get nothing. Nothing! Back up to the commons. Gonna come in here. Okay, cat. Jack Quicksilver and Ethan are the only two named ones, so I'm going to go talk to Ethan. Handsome young man whose attire portrays him as someone who prefers charm over harm. It looks to see if you or not. Question to be answered. May I help you? Are you Ethan Lanford? And you are? Uh, Reggie Brain Explosion. I was told that you're someone who might know a thing or two about temporal manipulation. Oh, yes, it's true. I'm a temporal manipulator, a psionic, whose expertise lies in the discipline of temporal manipulation. Here to learn abilities, expand your arsenal of psionic powers, and you're talking to the right guy. What can you tell me about temporal manipulation? Temporal man manipulation is the power is a psionic discipline that allows one to manipulate time in many different ways. Accelerate it, decelerate it, suspend it, reverse it. Before you get your hopes up too much, the effects on a uh, are on a local level, meaning that one's reshaping or even disfigurement of a uh, structure of the universe will not have large-scale consequences, but it will rather only affect a small, small part of space-time. 
This is the very part that's being manipulated. I understand if you're finding this difficult to comprehend, it's uh, not an uh, accessible subject, really. Regardless, it is an immensely powerful discipline in the right hands. It's sadly underused. Uh, why do you say that, sir? To become a master temporal manipulator, one needs time. Time to manipulate, time to practice, time to experience. The first one, in the very core of our universe, space-time. We manipulate the temporal, but for space-time to remain in balance and the spatial must react. The uh, second one, as with any skill, one needs to extensively train, develop his abilities in order to become proficient at them. This takes time to practice, but it also is practicing on time itself. But the third point is that it's the most important one, is the thing is that sets temporal manipulation apart from other side disciplines. Temporal manipulation, on its most basic level, does not possess the destructive power of other disciplines. No pyrokinetic fireballs or accelerated ice shards. No ways to drive your enemies de uh, dera derailed. Uh, uh, cause them to fight one another or against the horrors plucked out of their very own minds. Manipulating time requires time. Requires temporal experience. With other disciplines, even if one doesn't understand their meaning, one can achieve much through simply understanding the mechanics. With temporal manipulation, mechanics only have meaning if you understand the passage of time. Something one might not be, in fact, definitely cannot be able to truly understand without sufficient experience. That comes when one has the right amount of time available to him. Most have plenty too much. That's why they waste it. Those who don't, they chase it. But they might have plenty available to chase. Now, those who've experienced it running out, those realize its true value. You're implying that it takes an old person to be a good manipulator, yet you're looking pretty damn young. I do look young, yes, but I have experience. I may be one of the best, which I admit does not say much considering there aren't many of us out there, but I still have a life ahead of me to truly acquire the experience I told you about. However, I have been taught by the best, you see, yes. Arthur Kane, my mentor and true master of temporal manipulation, has helped me understand certain important things earlier than I normally would, but that is a whole other story. For some reason, this guy, like, the way that they've written him and the way that he's speaking kind of like as a, uh, like, and I'm putting it with the cadence as I'm reading it, but, uh, the fuck is this, uh... Not Spock. Uh, what's the other guy? The captain. Not Data, not Data. Like, old school. The first one. Kirk! Kirk! Yeah. He's got like a Captain Kirk air to him. Yeah, he, he, he's... This guy sounds hammy. If he was any hammier, he'd had a curly tail and a pushed up nose. I'd like to learn some abilities. Certainly, I can, temper, uh, I can teach temporal distortion. Limited temporal increasement and psychotemporal dilation. Uh, temporal distortion. Offerability allows a manipulator to cause damage by exploiting a phenomenon called temporal recoil, the natural tendency of time to revert to its most stable state upon being manipulated. While the time between the distortion and the manifestation of the resulting recoil will always be a fixed interval, the more one applies temporal distortion within that period of time, the more energy the recoil will have and thus will cause more damage to the affected matter as space-time is being rapidly untwisted into its original form. Fast thinking and skilled manipulators can use temporal distortion to utterly devastating effect. 
will cost you uh, only uh, 20 Stygian coins to learn this ability, but since we are in SGS, I'll accept uh, 50 credits uh, as well. Here you go! Here's 50 bucks! Excellent! He pockets the money. Now, unless we uh, want to be subjected to the odd stares from the rest of the patrons, I suppose we'll move to one of the other rooms where we can train in relative quiet and peace. Um, use my room. Perfect, I'll be right behind you. Well, yeah, but, like, that's the whole deal. The, the... Yay, I got temporal distortion. Shut up, cat. Nobody loves you. I know, right? My 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 well dressed, brain exploding, um, chameleon skinned, uh, what was it? Character is uh, is is doing great. Like I love the fact that <laughs> he looks like some sort of like. A mix between a black hitman and a professor. <laughs> and yet, <laughs> the icon is, is definitely not that. Baron Samedi looking motherfucker. Alright. Shift controls. Oh, okay. So, what was the, uh, yeah, Metathermix was the last one that I had. Yeah, and I found the guy who could teach me it, but apparently he wants me to go and shoot rats. Yeah. He told me I have to go shoot rats, that's why I have these, uh, uh, putrefying bolts. Yeah. So, I suppose I need to head down to the cave tunnel, exit, and docks. There's not much else I can do right now, at least that I know of. Yeah, he's pulling a Moira Brown on me, without at least being cute. And greet you with a warm smile. Ah, Reggie, brain explosion. Good to finally meet you. I'm Malcolm. How can I help you? I need to get out in the caves. You didn't access your card yet, right? Should be around here somewhere. He starts looking for the drawers. He produces a red card and passes it to you. There it is. Now listen here. This is the procedure. When you uh, want to leave, you let me know and I'll open the inner gate. And then you step into the transition room and then I can close the inner gate. Open the outer gate, and off you go. Alright. Now, when you want to get back in, use that card uh, that I gave you on the console outside. Stand in front of that camera so I can confirm it's you, and then I'll open the outer gate. Earlier, we do bioscanning every time someone passes, but no one ever showed up positive. It became a nuisance. What if I do contract a disease? Then be kind enough to inform me so I can activate the turrets. They'll shred you to pieces, and we'll burn the remains and everything's good. Just kidding. Or am I? Uh, just, just open the fucking gate. He nods and he tips his, uh, and a tip for you. If you find yourself surrounded by rat hounds, use flares to scare them away. They'll be back, though, so try not to stick around. Thanks, I'll keep that in mind.
Bison, telekinesis. Oh. Okay, never mind. Let's see if I can find this dude. Ooh. Willowy room woman removes her respirator as you approach and exhibit a smile beneath. You remember her talking to her the first time you came here, but for some reason her name eludes you at the moment. She even mentioned it. Her light soprano voice is quick to remind you, though. Hi, Reggie Brain Explosion. Remember me, Essie. Of course, Essie. How could I forget you? How's it going? Hmm, decent. Well, you've been admitted to the station, so I reckon it can't be bad, right? Uh, no thanks, I'll manage. Okay. Sentry. boing kind of sound. Over here? Oh, head north one map. Okay. Oh! Boing. A lean athletic man faces you as he greets a friendly resonant voice. Hello, friend. I don't believe we've met. Name's Bison. Well met, Bison. I'm Reggie Brain Explosion. Love to chat more, but as you can see, we're a bit busy right now. Is there something that you need? Uh, I was hoping you could teach me psi ability, sir. I can teach you psychokinetics if you're interested, but I'm afraid I'll have to charge you. Uh, that's all right. You, what can you teach me? When it comes to psionics, I can teach you telekinetic punch, force field, uh, force emission, and electrokinesis. Uh, I'll take telekinetic punch. When you focus your mind, create a telekinetic ball and launch it at your target. The impact is often so strong that if you hit a living target, that you're likely to daze it for a short while. I can teach it to you this ability for 50 credits. Yep, here you go. <laughs> nice. All right, now we have three, so. I'm gonna have shift be my, uh, my TK skills. So that way I can fit it all. Yeah, I don't... Not using pickpocket. Here we go. there unlib uh, I cannot pronounce that I can't pronounce a lot today to be quite honest uh, no I had not added the flares down at my menu but now that I have you can't use the throwing nets really that's annoying.
Oh, the quick slots. Okay. They're like the trank darts. Alright. Alright, dude. Need you open the door thing. In we go. Actually, let's uh, go sneaky beaky mode. Old Jonas. Old man wearing an old coat, old pants, and old boots introduces himself with an amiable smile. Oh, it's the young dredgy brain explosion. I'll have to do some hunting. I hear you're very knowledgeable in the tunnels, old man. I uh, could use some advice. Been crawling through these tunnels all my life. What do you need to know? Um, what can you tell me about the abandoned outpost nearby? Here's one is just north of the crossroads. My wrist is cracking like crazy right now. Oof. The nearest one is just north of the Crossroads Watch. They stretch to the east and the west from there. They were built by the Omega Station, but are somewhat in ruins since we put them out of business. Plenty of rat hounds there. North of the Crossroads Watch and stretch east and west. Oh, and if you're heading there, could you do me a favor? I was scavenging near those outposts a while back, and I think I lost my old digital watch there. It was one of the. Uh, it was about this big and made out of metal. It does have a strap. So, uh, it doesn't have a strap, so I keep it in my pocket. It must have fallen out somewhere. Could you keep an eye out for it? If you bring it back, I'll make a good bargain for it. All right. I'll keep a lookout. Is it really true that you descended to the bottom of the deep caverns? He laughs. Listen, youngster, this, there's not a place in this cursed underworld that these legs haven't visited. I have descended as low as you can go and even took a peek into the dreaded mutagen tanks and, well, maybe I'll tell you more over a drink sometime. How much damage did the earthquake do to the surrounding cave tunnels? Well, a lot of the passageways caved in. I'd used dynamite to clear them, but... Tanner confiscated it, all of it to make it available for clearing up the South Tunnel. Can't blame him. The metro is more important. Passage to the lake is clear, though, if you're up for some fishing or something. Tell me about the creatures that inhabit these tunnels. Well, there's cave hoppers, rat hounds, side beetles, and rarely shadow crawlers. What critter are you interested in? Well, tell me about cave hoppers. Harmless little crit critters, quite tasty if kicked up properly too you'll generally find them near lakes and other wet caves because that's where their favorite food lake mushrooms grow they can be hard to hunt down sometimes because they are a little they are fast little buggers and can crawl through small crevices that you wouldn't think that they would ever fit in if you're looking to catch or kill one the best tactic is hide near a patch of lake mushrooms and ambush them when they come to feed what about the rat hounds Rat hounds are ugly, smelly, mangy, disease-ridden, dog-sized rats. You find them, you can find them anywhere, and if you find them somewhere, you know that they too will get, uh, that they'll get there too eventually. Well. Individually, they are not so tough, but they usually move around in packs, sometimes hordes. There are very good pack hunters, don't let them surround you. In a pinch, throw a flare. They're deathly afraid of fire. Alright, well, tell me about the, uh, side beetles. That's a critter you want to steer clear of. Scientists call them azure something because of their blue stripes. 
but the rest of us just call them side beetles or just side bugs for obvious reasons. They're bugs that can sling all kinds of psionics at you. Bump into one, you might be able to take it. Literally, it'll give you a headache. You run into two of them, you better start retreating while you can. At least they're not that fast, so you should be able to evade them. Run into three, that's probably already too late. See, weird thing is, not only do they hit you harder when they're in a group, but they also start throwing crazier and crazier stuff your way. More than just, oh shit, they're gaff. Ah, uh, fuck. And if there's also a Goliath around, then you're in a psionic hell. If you absolutely must fight them, try and get close and personal. They're not comfortable with exposing their massive brains to uh, sling psionics while people are near them. They're not, not even the Goliaths. Instead, they'll either try and gain some distance or will try and bite you. And their bite is far less dangerous than their psionics. Goliaths have, a big, uh, have big horns, however, and those can easily go through a man. Side beetles usually hang around mine shrooms, so if you're in an area where those are plentiful, be on your guard. What are the shadow crawlers? Vile, awful insects that crawl around cave walls, all quiet and sneaky. They surprise their victims by injecting them with a good, healthy dose of paralyzing venom. Retreat to the shadows until the poison makes you stiff as a rail and they eat you. Huh, interesting. Chuckles, don't start quaking yet, because they're rarely seen in the vicinity of the SGS, but they're out there in case you notice things getting a bit too quiet. On the lookout. Alright. What are these tunnelers I heard people mention? The thing is, no one really knows for sure what they are. They're nomadic people of the deep. People around these parts call them tunnelers because they're known to dig wide, sprawling tunnels throughout the underground, connecting remote places to, of the underrail. But then again, no one knows why they do that. Some say they have a huge city in the middle of the deep caverns that you can reach if you follow the longest of their tunnels. Some call them the faceless because they believe that under their huge mask they have no face. Superstitious folks don't like people saying that word though and draw their attention to you. Are they dangerous? Very, but not always hostile. My experience, smaller groups of individual tunnels, tunnelers, uh, that you should be most wary, uh, wary of. Larger groups generally have, uh, generally leave each other under rail folks alone, and they ain't bothering them. Now, thanks for the info. Alright, so let's go find some ratas. Help that out at least, but I'm supposed to be going north. I press it a couple times. You approach the passage, you hear faint squeaking sounds coming up from up ahead. A pair of red beady eyes blinking in and out of the darkness. I don't mind moving slow because at least it gives me a chance to react. That's the important part.
that pathfinding. Holy shit, those rats are fast. Oof. That's a dirty, nasty crit. Oh, shit. Not enough action points. God damn it. God damn it, Bobby. Ow, ow. Ow, ow. It burns and stings. How many? Shoot a rat hound with a bullet. Okay, I just needed to shoot with one. Uh, shoot one. Fuck you, you bastard rat. Uh, I'm gonna use a hypo, because seems like a wise idea. Fuck you, you miserable bastard. Wait, Psy abilities cost nothing but Psy? Yeah, I used the arrow I was supposed to. Well, at least I found uh, more stuff. Border Guard orders. These old bloodstained orders were issued by the Omega Central Command to their border guards. The orders state that they are to shoot anyone that they perceive as SGS members on site. Also, a thousand Sharon's bonus bounty placed on anyone called Gorski. Pick up, study this item to gain 75 points of experience, and you can study this type of item up to three times. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, fun box. Five mil rounds, a side booster, incendiary bolts. Nice. 0.7 millimeter. You got in here. Got some bandages. Supercharged lithium cells, another lockpick, and some more bolts. Good, we need more bolts. More, more. I'll do it all right. Exploring this game here, getting my teeth kicked in. As I am. Oof! Can I shoot that fucker from here? 
think I can actually. Ho ho ho! He thought he was so special. Come on, let me. <laughs> oh, wait, am I actually out of, uh, no? Enough points. Yeah, fine, screw you. <laughs> Look at that! You can't open the door because I'm standing in front of it. Uh, stupid hounds. Hmm. How's that temporal distortion treating you there? Three stacks of temporal distortion. I want to see this rat explode. Oh, rats can't open doors, period. Oh! <laughs> Woo! A dog! <laughs> that rat got liquefied! <laughs> What we got back here? Nothing. I guess this wasn't the generator that it talked about. The the main generator. Hello. The rocks are immune. I guess I have to use some sort of like actual gun for that or something. Oh yeah, I could have stunned him. Yeah. Lock picking ten. I think I at least have lock picking ten, maybe? Let's see. Do, 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 do. Insufficient skill. Fuck. Well, we're not going anywhere. Okay, um... Oh, keyboard wasn't working. I was like, uh, why is that not, um... Not doing the worky work thing? There we go. <laughs> Foolproof plan. Well, it was a foolproof plan until... That happened. Oh, well. Eh. 
Eh, screw it. Let's go fuck up the rats. Alrighty. All right, the rat seems to have escaped down this way. Oh no, he he fucked off. Unless he like came out this way, maybe? No, just... God knows where the fuck that other rat went. Never mind, found him. Ha! <laughs> The rat second winded. You fucking kidding me? Eh. Went pretty well. Pretty good. All right. So the question is, uh. Like, that's got to be, like, the generator room. That has got to be the generator room right there. These rocks guard the way through. This one? Standing still. It is a mystery. Maybe it's because I pulled the power switch? Yeah, I was confused because I was sitting there before. Didn't have any issues. Oh, I don't have Snooper. Uh, perception boosting foods, let me see. I have stuffed bat. Increase detection. Can stew. Reduce all heat damage. Mushroom salad. Increase perception by one. How do I eat this? Oh, right click. Okay. Spawning spaces? 
Mm -hmm. I mean, you tell me, man. Yeah, you probably get a lot out of it. My guy's not very perceptive. I think I've got, like, almost baseline perception. Also, yeah, I've got five perception right now with the boost. I am at baseline. Oh fuck. Oh fuck. <laughs> well, this is great. I ain't fucking with you! The bitch ass hoe. God damn. Okay, um I might not survive this. Not enough action points. Are you fucking kidding me? Run away, boys! Where the f fuck did- Ow! Oh, I'm fucked. Yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> oh, shit. No, he, cu he cut me off. I couldn't retreat. That was interesting. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, yeah, I had the choke point and then it just spontaneously stopped being a choke point, so.
think now would probably be a good place for me to put a pin in it for right now, just so that I can go and brush up on some stuff for the game. I'm gonna go watch a bunch of tutorials and be like, okay, I'm gonna learn how to actually make a proper... a proper build for this game, because... Ah, I'm getting my legs broken right now. <laughs> proper is relative? Uh... I mean, caltrops are a thing, yeah. Let's uh, make sure to actually save, save here. Because we at least got everything else done from the other place. And because paranoia from Fallout... I, I remember I got all the way to the end of Fallout 1 um, back in the day, and, like, right at the end, it just crashed. It was terrible. It was horrible. Uh. So, yeah. Oh, my God. Underrail, it's an interesting and distinctly hard game, and it beats your legs. <laughs> it works you over with a fucking tire iron. Uh, I think I'm gonna... Yeah, I'm probably gonna take a nap for a little bit here, and then... If I can wake up in time, I'll probably pop on to do some art for this evening over on Picardo. Uh, my not-all-here brain is not remembering anything else that I need to make announcement on, but... Alright guys, I want to thank you all so much for popping by and watching this. If the game looked cool to you, definitely go and check it out. It's under rail, it's on Steam, and uh, I think you can get it from their website as well. But till then, I hope to see you all later. Uh, and go ahead and give our usual outro of a big thanks to our patrons. Uh, we would not be able to do this without the help that you guys provide us every month. Uh, that thanks goes out to Angel, Avery Hillpeak, Connor Walker, Hash, Ivan Shear, Delify, Sharknet, Zero, and Zygrado Rixon. Seriously, you guys mean the world to me. Thank you all so much for that. And thank you again to Magnus for providing the game for today that we will be trying to play through, um, hopefully a little bit more successfully in the future. I hope you guys have an absolutely wonderful afternoon. And I will see the rest of y'all later on on Picardo this evening. Bye.